Good day everyone, this is SCM007 or General Biology 1. For today's lesson, we are going to discuss lipids as one of the four biological molecules which can be found in organisms. Before we begin, let us have our lesson objectives. So by the end of this lesson, you can say that yes, I can describe the different and major function groups of lipids and I will be able to identify what major groups of lipids is present in a specific molecule or substance. First, let us have our lipid facts. The word lipid is derived from the Greek word lipos meaning fat. Lipids are also chemically diverse group of organic compounds which are insoluble in water. Lipids are hydrophobic in nature due to the predominance of hydrocarbon chains or the CH group in their structure. They are the chief storage form of energy. They provide sixfold as much energy as an equivalent mass of glycogen. So that means if you have an equal mass of glycogen and lipid, mas mataas ng 6 times ang mapaproduce na energy ng lipid as compared to the glycogen or the carbohydrate. Fat and oils are the principal stored forms of energy in many organisms. Fatty acids are the simplest form of lipids. So by the end of this lesson, we will be able to discuss why these are considered the lipid facts and what the rationale is behind all of these. So first, let us discuss what lipid is. So lipid is a combination of a long chain of hydrocarbon with a carboxylic acid head. So this is a long chain of hydrocarbon, meaning combination of carbon and hydrogen, and it has a head which is composed of a carboxylic acid group. So it is a carboxylic acid group. It is composed of carbon, double bonded with oxygen with a hydroxyl group or OH group. Later, I will be showing you kung ano yung ating carboxylic acid group. So, bakit siya water resistant or bakit siya hydrophobic? Ang CH kasi, these are nonpolar substances. So, since they are nonpolar, that means they do not mix well with water, if at all. Pero bakit ganun? Meron naman siyang carboxylic acid head. Diba ang carboxylic acid, nung diniscuss natin ang carbon chemistry during our grade 9, kapag sinabi natin na carboxylic acid na functional group, these are soluble in water. Pero bakit ganun? Meron naman siyang polar, itong carboxylic acid head, meron din siyang non-polar. Meron siyang polar and non-polar. Yun nga lang kasi, Mas predominant kasi ang long chains of carbon and hydrogen group. So, kahit na meron tayong carboxylic acid head which is polar, nalalamangan siya ng ating non-polar group which is the carbon-hydrogen group. Kaya non-polar pa rin siya. So, one of these forms of lipid is called the triglyceride. So, triglyceride siya kasi it is composed of the glycerol with three fatty acids. So, since 3 kaya tri, nakamix sila sa glycerol kaya glyceride. So, triglyceride or triglycerol. So, this is one of the forms of lipid. So, ang kanyang structure is composed of 3 fatty acid chain linked to glycerol and its function is for long-term energy storage and insulation for animals. Unahin natin yung insulation for animals. Now, lipids has a lot of functions in the body. One of them is for insulation. Ang lipid kasi, mataas ang retention rate niya ng heat. So, ibig sabihin, hindi basta-basta nawawala ang heat or ang internal heat natin sa katawan sa ating environment. That is because of the insulation function ng ating lipid. So, that is why those who have a higher amount of fat in their body, mas mataas yung chance nila na hindi agad sila malalamigan. I-compare natin doon sa tao na payat or mas mababa yung content ng fat sa kanyang katawan or lipid sa kanyang katawan. Mas madali siyang lamigin. So, that is good for insulation. Next is energy storage. Remember when I discussed to you the carbohydrates na the chemical energy that is found in the bonds between carbon to carbon sa ating carbohydrate, nandudun yung energy. Nandudun natin kinukuha yung ating energy na kailangan ng katawan natin. I-compare natin yung structure ng carbohydrate sa lipid. Sa carbohydrate, they 
could have uh, one sugar unit to three sugar units, ilan lang yung carbon to carbon bond nun. Samantalang sa fatty acids, this is composed of long chains of carbons with hydrogen. So, ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung amount na energy na naka-store sa lipids. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, mas madami siyang energy na maproproduce. Now, this could be saturated or unsaturated. Let us delve deeper doon sa structure ng triglyceride and how triglycerides are formed. So, this is a fatty acid. There are three of them. So, there are three fatty acid chains. This is the glycerol. Ito yung long chain of carbon-hydrogen bond or the hydrocarbons. Ito naman yung ating carboxylic acid na functional group. So, carboxylic acid na functional group is composed of carbon with double bonds sa oxygen at sa kabila naman ay ang hydroxyl group or oxygen-hydrogen group. Okay. Dito naman sa triglycerol, it is composed of three carbons na kung saan each carbon is attached to a hydrogen and also to a hydroxyl group or oxygen-hydrogen na elements. Now, what will happen is that para makapag-join sila, they must undergo dehydration synthesis. Dehydration means the removal of water and then synthesis means to put together. So that means yung OH group doon sa fatty acid na chain natin ay magko-combine doon sa hydrogen doon sa hydroxyl group. So this will be released as a form of water. Ngayon naman yung oxygen dito kulang na siya ng carbon, yung carbon dito kulang din siya ng carbon. So these two will join up. Sa pag-join nila, we will form the ester linkage. So this is the ester linkage. This is the link between the glycerol and the fatty acid. Okay? Gawin mo yun ng tatlong beses. So now, you will have a triglyceride. Triglyceride kasi tatlong fatty acid na kung saan naka-attach sa glycerol. Since there are three fatty acids, ibig sabihin, tatlo din yung maproproduce na water molecule. So ito na siya ngayon after niya mag-mix. So this is a process na kung saan nakikita natin na at a molecular level yung pag-form ng triglyceride with the use of the glycerol and fatty acid under dehydration synthesis and also the formation of the ester linkage. Okay. Now let's go to the difference between saturated fat and unsaturated fat. When we speak of saturated fat, ibig niyang sabihin ay lahat ng mga carbon meron siyang kabond na hydrogen. So, ibig sabihin, wala siyang double bond. There are no double bond between carbon atoms. So, that means, meron siyang long straight chain of carbon and hydrogen bond. Now, since this is a long chain of carbon and hydrogen bond, ibig sabihin, the structure is rigid. There's no room for uh, movement or no room for locomotion or no room for kinks or curvatures. Okay, now these are typically found in butter and in animal fats, kagaya ng fats ng baboy ng baka. Since they remain solid at room temperature, ibig sabihin yung fats ng, car ng baboy at ng baka, those are saturated fats. Now, these types of fat can contribute to cardiovascular diseases. Kasi nga, di ba, they are very rigid. So that means, pwede sila mag-harden or mag-take place or mag-stay doon sa place na yun. Kaya pwede sila mag-block ng flow ng blood. These are the main sources of saturated fats. Most saturated fats are derived from animals. So, matalang sa unsaturated fats, they could be found in fruits and vegetables and also in fish. So, kung ang saturated fat natin ay lahat ng kanilang carbon ay nakabond sa hydrogen at walang double bond, dito naman sa unsaturated, meron silang at least isang carbon to carbon double bond. And they are mostly derived from plant and fish fats. Dahil dito, because of the 
unsaturation or dahil hindi lahat ng carbon ay napupuno ng hydrogen, they could be liquid at room temperature. Now, kapag sinabi na ba natin na unsaturated fat dahil gawa siya sa plants or dahil galing siya sa plants and fish fats, healthy na ba siya? There are two types of unsaturated fat. Okay? Now, there are two fats, saturated and unsaturated. Under unsaturated, meron na naman tayong two types. We have the cis fat molecule and the trans fat molecule. So, kapag sinabi natin na cis fat molecule, doon sa double bond ng carbon, nasa isang side lang yung kanilang hydrogen. So, dahil may space dito, it could afford some kinks or it could afford some curvatures. Kaya pwede siyang maging flexible. Samantalang sa trans fat molecule naman, magka-opposite side yung hydrogen na kung saan located ang double bond. Kagaya dito, nandito ang double bond. Ang hydrogen natin ay nasa magkabilang dulo. So that means, kahit na isa siyang unsaturated, it will still behave as a saturated fat. There is still no room for curvatures kasi it will behave like saturated. Okay? So kaya makikita nyo sa mga label na kung minsan ang kanilang catchphrase ay no trans fat. Ibig sabihin nun, wala siyang trans fatty acid. Wala siyang trans fat molecule. Kaya hindi siya katulad ng sa saturated na hindi siya healthy sa katawan. So this is the difference between saturated and unsaturated cis fatty acid. So this is saturated. Pwede rin na ilagay natin dito yung trans unsaturated. Tapos ito naman yung difference ng cis unsaturated fat. So that means hindi healthy ang mga saturated fat pati yung mga trans fat samantalang much healthier choice ang mga cis unsaturated fats kagaya ng mga fats na makikita sa fruits and vegetables and sa fish Let's now go to the next form of lipid The other one is triglyceride Next we have phospholipids This is what we have discussed during our discussion in the plasma membrane so, the phospholipid is composed of two substances. The first one is the fatty acid chain. Ito yung fatty acid chain natin. And then we ha also have the phosphate head. So, kagaya ng sa ating uh, fatty acid, meron siyang polar na head at meron siyang non-polar na tail. So, this is typically found in structures of living things. So, ibig sabihin yung mga phospholipid, kadalas, kadalasan siya makikita sa mga different structures, kagaya ng sa ating plasma membrane ng cell. Okay? Next, we have steroids. So, steroids could be found in many forms. Pwede siyang maging testosterone, pwede siyang maging uh, hormone. So, steroids are typically found as hormones. Kagaya dito ng cholesterol, hormone, and vitamins. Okay? Now, paano natin malalaman kung steroid group nga ang isang fat? Malalaman natin yan kapag meron siyang four fused carbon rings. Kagaya nito, this is a carbon ring. So, since apat sila, that means they are steroids. It could be cholesterol, hormone, or vitamins. Under cholesterol, the function is to control the fluidity of the cell membrane. Ito yung kinakailangan para mag-remain na fluid. Ito yung nasa loob ng plasma membrane para hindi maging rigid or para hindi mag-collapse yung phospholipid bilayer natin. Ito yung nasa gitna niya. And then, pwede rin siyang gawing hormone which regulates the different processes in the body. Because our body could be controlled in two different ways. One is by electrical signals ng brain natin papunta sa nerves natin. Yun yung immediate na response or yun yung immediate na connection between our body and our brain. Sa mga hormones naman, this is produced inside the cell na kung saan nire-release siya sa blood. So, ibig sabihin, indirect yung ating function ng hormone sa katawan natin. Next, we have vitamins. 
Specifically, these are fat or these are lipid-based vitamins. Ito yung hindi agad-agad natutunaw sa blood. So, these are A, B, and D. Kasama dito actually ang E and K. So, those vitamins are lipid-based vitamins. So, they support metabolism and cell processes. Next, we also have waxes. So, waxes are typically solid at room temperature, and they are also insoluble in water. Waxes can be found in nature, and it could be produced in a laboratory. In most, makikita ang mga wax as the covering sa mga plants in order to prevent the dehydration of the leaves of the plant. Kasi yung mga plants natin, meron silang tiyatawag na estomata, meron din silang tiyatawag na guard cell. Kapag masyadong tirik ang araw or masyadong mainit, pwedeng mawala yung mga water content dun sa leaves. Because of this, pwedeng magkaroon ng pagwilt ng leaves ng plant. In order to prevent this, nagkakaroon ng waxy layer yung mga dahon ng plants in order to prevent dehydration or in order to prevent transpiration or the evaporation of water in the leaves of the plants. Example are beeswax, earwax, cuticle of leaf. Next, we have foods that are high in fat, fatty meats and fish, cheese, butter, avocado, nuts and seeds, and chocolates. They have high fat content, lalong lalo na sa mga shiny na substances, kagaya ng butter. Yung chocolate, kapag sila ay natemper ng maayos, they give off this shiny or glossy na reflection. So that means mataas ang fat content ng mga yun. Or doon sa mga hindi natemper na maayos ng mga chocolates, ito yung parang may mga white substances na nasa ibabaw ng mga chocolates. Those are fats. What are the healthy sources of fats? Kadalasan, when it is from plant-based, or fish-based, these are healthy sources of fat. Nuts and seeds, avocado, coconut, olives. Samantalang, dun sa mga meat-based na mga fat sources, they are typically unhealthy. And that's it actually for our module which talks about lipids.